Hello my friends, welcome back to my 4 star school YouTube channel. In today's lesson, we are going to talk about the state management in GetX. We have talked about the raw management uh, in GetX in our previous lesson. I will put a link in the description below, so feel free to uh, check that part of the video if you uh, haven't watched yet. Also, uh, if you are new to my channel, uh, feel free to reach out to my channel page and you will find a Flutter UI from scratch tutorial and a Flutter tutorial for beginners and also a dire programming tutorial. So don't forget to subscribe to my channel and thumb up my content. Also open the notification so you won't miss out the latest Flutter tutorial. Okay, without further ado, let's get started. In GetX, uh, there are two types of state management. Uh, one is simple uh, state management, another is uh, reactive state management. So first, I will talk about the React state management, uh, then we'll back to the simple uh, state management. So for the React state management, uh, first you need to declare a reactive variable. So let's back to our Visual Studio Code and also open our uh, Android emulator and I have uh, write some example uh, I will uh, walk through with you guys and give you an explanation uh, what's going on in the sample code here so first uh, let's uh, go back to this mind map uh, in GetX we have a uh, three way to declare a reactive variable so the first way you, you're using uh, Rx type for example, Rx string, Rx boolean, and Rx int, Rx double. So another is you using a generic type. Uh, you uh, you have this Rx, and you're using this uh, bracket. And the last one is you add the obx at the end of your uh, variable. You have an initial value. For example, here, uh, let's go back to our Visual Studio code. So. Here is our uh, first approach to declare a uh, getx variable. The reason we make this final because this one actually is a object. So we have uh, this object type and we can access to this variable using dot values here. These type are predefined by uh, getx. So we could just use uh, if you know what the uh, uh, type uh, you're going to use so you can use uh, this way and but I didn't recommend for this approach so let's come our second approach so let's open comment so for the second approach uh, using this Rx uh, with this uh, bracket so inside this bracket uh, you're going to have your generic type so for example here I'm using the boolean type uh, which can star SDK so we have integer type and we have a double type, number type, and this type, a map type as well. And what's more, we can define our custom type. So for example, here we have our user type. So the user just uh, our custom uh, defined class uh, with the uh, name attribute and the age attribute. So we also have this uh, con constructor uh, with those two name parameters, this name by default will be empty, uh, the age by default will be zero. So back to this reactive state management there, and you see we define this uh, user uh, variable and we mark it as a final because uh, you declare this one so you cannot change it. Uh, this object address, but uh, you can change the value inside this object. And we have a uh, default uh, value for this user so I give it uh, my name and my age for this one and because we have a default value so I can remove uh, those uh, as well so it's uh, highly recommend you have a default value for those uh, reactive variable uh, since we are using uh, now safety uh, flutter uh, version so it's better to give a default value. For example, here I will have a default user and empty 
uh, map for these uh, my map and empty list for these items uh, and we have a zero for the number false for the boolean so this is our second approach uh, to declare reactive variable and the last one uh, last one is uh, this approach so let's uh, comment it out so the last approach is you just add this dot obs at the end of your initial value and you make this a variable observable so uh, when this value change and your ui will automatic update and i'm going to give you an example how the ui will automatic update uh, when you change the value so for here we're using this account variable right and we mark it as observable and actually it will show on the screen an initial value will be zero so we scroll down you see i declare a function uh, called increment uh, we'll get this uh, value uh, since it's object so we're going to access it is uh, int value by using the value right so this statement will equal to uh, count uh, value equals uh, count value plus one right so uh, we're just using this shortcut so we will increase this uh, count variable and and also we scroll down you see i using uh, this one uh, obx so what is obx uh, back to the mind map uh, the obx actually uh, receive uh, another function uh, which uh, take a widget as it is uh, written type and you have uh, your uh, observable variable inside the widget so when you uh, variable change you will automatically uh, rebuild your uh, view right so in here uh, we you, we return this text widget inside our obx so you when you move your mouse you you will see this obx actually uh, receive the function uh, for it is a builder right so we're going to return this text widget and we have this count variable right and we can access to its value uh, using dot value right so if you move this counter so by default it's rx in right it's it's an object so we're going to use the value to get its actual value which is int and scroll down we have this uh flatting action button so when you click it you will call this uh, increment method uh, which we define here we will increase the value so let's check when i click this button this uh, number will increase you will see so that's pretty simple we don't using any like a staple widget in here but we actually achieve the same result as we using the staple widget because uh, getx uh, make these uh, variable observable so every time the value change uh, you will only rebuild this text widget so in this approach uh, we actually make this counter app without using any staple widget right so we just using this obx and also this uh, observable arrival uh, next i'm going to show you how can we uh, update those uh, custom uh, class right so back to uh, visual studio code you actually I define this uh, user class right I have this name and age so for our reactive state mention.dir actually I declare here as well so I will uh, comment out this part uh, to make my name uh, turn to upcase so there are two approach to update uh, custom class so so i'm going to show you the first approach okay okay here is the first approach come i'm going to comment it out and here you will see my name and my age 
uh, cause we are a custom class, right? So are we going to update a value? For example, in this case, when I press this button, I want to make all my name uh, capital letters and also increase my age. So if you didn't use uh, this approach, for example, uh, you're using uh, this approach like what we did uh, for our counter, it, it won't work because uh, uh, for the custom one, uh, you actually need to use something called update, uh, which will receive uh, your own instance and you update that instance. So for example, uh, we declare the user, right? The user variable and we give it initial value and we're using this obx to render our uh, name uh, by using user dot value dot name so we are not using user dot name dot value we're using user dot value dot name because we make this entire class observable so if you uh, may want to use something called a uh, user dot name dot value uh, this means you only make this uh, variable observable. So you are not making this entire class observable. Uh, I will talk that in later. So for this case, and uh, we can using value dot, uh, user dot value dot name to access my name. And we can use and another approach is you can using this user and you have this uh, bracket and you can also access to it is value. In this case, so I'm going to click this button and you're going to see uh, my name will turn to upcase and my age will be increased. So let's see. You see, actually uh, this line of code works. The reason uh, it works because uh, we receive our uh, user, uh, which, uh, which is this one. And it receives itself and it update itself, right? It update to uh, upcase and update it is age. So some of you may have a question like I can update the value using this uh, shortcut. Can I do in here? So the answer is no, you cannot do in here. So for example, uh, I restart and click this button. You see only my name uh, tend to upcase, but this one, this one doesn't work uh, because in this time we observable is entire uh, class. So we can now using this shortcut. So we need to manually update it is value uh, by changing to this, uh, it will work now. So, so the next, uh, I'm going to show you if I make those attribute inside this class observable. So I will uh, comment this out. And so here uh, I have a user class, right? And we have this uh, name and age and I make it uh, observable by add this obx so in our state react state.r and I will comment out this one and I comment out this so this means I only um, observable the variable inside uh, this user class right and so in this way we don't have this update method so since we are now uh, observable this entire class and we're going to uncomment this out we only uh, watch our uh, it is value so you'll see here uh, we first have this uh, user and we're using dot name to access it is name and also uh, then we're using this dot value so it's different than before we, we were using user dot value dot name and in this case, if you want to watch individual attribute, we're using user dot name dot value, right? So in this one, and we're going to scroll down. So here, and we're going to make a comment and comment out this one. So we're using user dot name dot value. Okay. So when I uh, press the button, uh, you will see uh, these. Uh, razor uh, tend to upcase and also this integer uh, will increase my age right and also we could use this shortcut because we observable on the individual 
uh, variable, right? We know observable uh, for this entire class, so we could using this approach. That's uh, for this uh, reactive uh, state management. So I hope you uh, now have a clear uh, understand how to uh, use and when to use it. So uh, back to a uh, visual theoretical, and let's uh, comment out this one. Uh, we're going to open uh, this one. So we make uh, this entire class observable again. So we comment out this. There are another approach to update the class, right? So first we're going to change it back to a uh, normal class and we observable the entire user class, right? So for here, uh, we declare a uh, user class and make it observable. For update, we could using another approach. By using this approach, you're going to uh, pass the entire new object. So let's comment this out and comment out this. Okay, so let's save. So by using this approach, when I click this button, you will see the name will turn to upcase, but the age will uh, turn to zero. Because by default, you see our age will be zero. So if you're using the second approach, uh, you're passing another uh, object. So let's see. When I click, you see, uh, actually, uh, my name tend to upcase, but the uh, age will tend to zero, and you will, won't increase. So if you know what you're doing, and uh, exactly uh, the, the variable or object you're going to use, so you can use the second approach. So otherwise, uh, I still recommend you using the first approach, so you can uh, using actual like a method or do some uh, your business logic in here. So this is another uh, stuff I want to mention. Okay, let's back to our mind map. Uh, you will see I write this usage. Uh, we have this OBX and also GetX controller. So if you are want to using those two, uh, you must contain observable variable. Uh, seems like you have a uh, these, these three type of uh, variable inside those two. So if you want to using get builder, you don't need to have this observable uh, variable because uh, we are using this simple state management. Uh, this is another approach provided by getx. So you can simple uh, management your state. And next I'm going to talk about this. So let's back to um, which still go. And here I write those two uh, class. So for the first one, uh, if you want to use this simple state management, uh, you must declare your controller uh, for the class. So for example, here I make my own controller class, uh, which extends the getx controller. And I make uh, this variable, so this counter variable. And also I declare a method uh, which increase this counter. But also, so the most important part is this update. And you will access to this update uh, only inside this getx controller. So you must extend this controller and you can access this uh, update method by which to update your variable and you will notify uh, the UI to change the UI. So here, uh, I will comment out this reactive a state management and I will uncomment out this simple state management. So let's open our uh, Android emulator. Uh, we might need to restart our application. Okay, here you see uh, we have this simple state management and we only have this counter variable shown here. And because you see, uh, we're going to walk you through uh, what's inside this simple state management class. So it's a stateless class, and we only have this get builder. Uh, you see here I using get builder. Uh, you will notice for this simple state management, we don't uh, use any like .obx or any uh, of those three. 
to declare variable. So this counter uh, just the normal uh, variable have this integer type, right? So in here, uh, we're using this get builder. Uh, we have this initial attribute and which uh, receive the controller. So we're going to uh, create this, this, this controller uh, by using it is constructor and we pass into this get builder, right? And then inside this builder attribute, we can uh, access to this controller. So here I then I will call it controller uh, with small case C and we have this uh, text widget and we can using controller dot counter to access our uh, counter variable, right? Basically, this this widget will show this zero on our screen, and also we have this uh, floating action button. Uh, when I click this floating action button, I actually will call this uh, increment uh, method inside our simple state controller, right? So the reason I using this uh, app case uh, class dot two dot increment because we actually declare this static uh, variable uh, controller get to and you can using this one so if I comment out this we don't have a like a, a chance to get this method so we were using something called get dot find we're going to find our controller yeah get dot find we're going to pass the controller. Oh, sorry, it will be here. The increment, right? You see, we can access to this increment by using this one. And let's open our uh, console. And uh, you will see, first we have this material controller, uh, which is this uh, get material app. Then we have our own controller because in this get builder we uh, create our controller so we controller allow into the memory so that means all those method or variable allow into the member so we could be using this get down find to find our controller uh, which in our memory and we could call it this increased method so when I click this button the counter will increase actually so let's see Right. And since we have another approach, so we could uh, comment and comment this out. You see, we declare a static variable uh, two. So we could using uh, another way to find our uh, increment get to the increment. Oh, make sorry. I need to save this first. And using dot increment. Oh, sorry, it should be controller to dot increment. You will see when I press this hot reload, uh, because we separate our view and controller actually. Uh, it's still A because the the number we store is inside this controller so we must press this uh, restart to clear our state so you start from zero okay you see our controller have been clear and when I press this button uh, the number increased yeah and so that's two approach you can uh, use to call the function inside the controller and that's the, uh, the approach you can use for this simple state management uh, for this uh, get builder. Okay, so back to here. And also, uh, in order to uh, give you the example, what's the get x, uh, this widget. So this one actually, uh, I write something here. Uh, we have uh, this. Uh, can we can access to the controller and we can uh, access to its standard value. So here I declare another variable 
uh, I make it observable. So uh, I have a, a, a mention in here. If you want to using this getx, uh, this uh, you must have a observable uh, variable inside those two. Let's see my name John here. Uh, using this uh, controller.net.value so you see here so uh, when you move your mouse you also see we have a an initial uh, this attribute so because we already initial our controller in this get builder so we don't need to initial in here so you are using the same controller from the memory okay so I think uh, that's all for today's video and we have a talk about this uh, simple state management and reactive state management in this getx and however there are more topic uh, related to the controller and also the dependence management so I will talk then in the later video so don't forget to subscribe to my channel and sum out my content and not open the notification so you won't miss out the latest flutter tutorial and after we finish this entire getx series I, I will using this getx uh, package to create a flutter app from this scratch so I will teach you how to uh, separate your view your controller and your business logic and make the complete the uh, application from this scratch Okay, thanks for watching. I will see you in next video.